Class, what's up? Welcome to our last video of Chapter 6. Um, and today we focus on those other types of quadrilaterals that we haven't really focused on yet, okay? The other side of our big organizer. Um, so those shapes are kites and trapezoids. So let's jump into it. A kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of congruent consecutive sides. All right, exactly two pairs. That's a little bit different than a rhombus, right? If you have a rhombus, you know, well, this is congruent to this, and then this, and this, so you actually have four pairs. Kites are a little different. If you notice in this picture, there's one and two pairs of consecutive sides. All right, so this is what we're looking for, two pairs of consecutive, sorry, excuse me, two pairs of congruent consecutive sides, and then we have some other properties that can help us tell if something is a kite or not, such as if it's a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. That is shared. What not that like something else? That's like a rhombus. All right, so we see if the diagonals have to be perpendicular, then we say that AC must be perpendicular to BD. And we also know that if we have a or if a quadrilateral is a kite, then there's exactly one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. All right. So notice here, I'm going to be very, very specific. I'm going to say angle B is congruent to angle D. And I'm also going to write this. This is, a, this is a false statement right now. What do I have to do to make this true? Put a line through it, okay? Angle A cannot be congruent to angle C. Only one pair of opposite angles can be congruent in a kite. All right, so there are some properties of kites we'll, we'll practice in a little bit. Uh, let's jump down to the bottom and start talking a little bit about trapezoids. Let's see here. Yep, that should be good. All right. So, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So this is how we differentiate between trapezoids and parallelograms. If there's one pair of parallel sides, well, then you have a trapezoid. If there are two pairs, well, then you have a parallelogram. All right. Now, those parallel sides, we call them bases. And the non-parallel sides we call legs. And we call consecutive angles which, co which share a side base angles. All right, so let me be, let me be a little more clear on that because I don't think I did a great job. If I draw a picture like this, Okay, I can say this is parallel to this, and I call this a base, and this a base. I call this a leg, I call this a leg. And what I have to do is I have to now say for base angles, They have to share a base, okay? They have to share a base. So that's why I'm also going to write base angles up here. But I'm only going to point at the angles that share a com or that have a common base. So hopefully that makes sense why these two are base angles and these two are base angles together with each other because they share this base and because they share that base up at the top. All right? Now there is another type of trapezoid called an isosceles trapezoid, and we call it isosceles when there are congruent legs. All right, so the only difference here, notice when I drew this picture, this leg was not congruent to this leg, maybe something like single and double. Well, now if I want a trap, an isosceles trapezoid, excuse me, I draw something like this and like this. They're still parallel, and now I have to say that the legs are congruent, okay? So there's the difference between a, a trapezoid, excuse me, and an isosceles trapezoid. All right, let's keep going. 
We have some more properties to finish up, and then we will do some practice problems, and we will basically be ready for our test. Okay, let's see. So if a, if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles are congruent. So be very careful here. We cannot say that base angles are congruent unless we have an isosceles trapezoid. And again, they come in pairs. So we say angle B is congruent to angle C, or angle A is congruent to angle D. And why? Because those are the pairs. Those are the pairs. Base angles. Base angles. All right, we cannot say that angle A is congruent to angle B. Okay? In fact, it's impossible, then it would be a rectangle. Angle A cannot be congruent to angle B. All right, if we continue on, if a trapezoid has one pair of congruent base angles, then the trapezoid is isosceles. That's kind of just going backwards. Right? Normally we say if if, it, if you have an isosceles trapezoid, then the base angles are congruent. Well, now we're just flipping it. And then lastly, a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if it's diagonals. Oh, misspelled diagonals. Diagonals are congruent. Okay. So just to finish up some of these pictures and conclusions, here I would say... If angle A is congruent to angle D, then isosceles trapezoid. And then in my next picture, I would say AC is congruent to BD. All right. Now, I'm going to skip this diagram down at the bottom here because we're going to do it in our big organizer in class tomorrow. So let's skip ahead and let's do some practice problems that require us to use our properties of kites and trapezoids. All right, so first two, kites. Let's see here. In kite EFGH, FEJ is 25 degrees, so 25 degrees, and FGJ, FGJ, is 57 degrees. Interesting. Okay, find each measure. Now, it's asking us to find GFJ. There are a couple of ways to do this. I would strongly encourage you that when you have a kite, especially when we're working with angles, make sure you draw in one or all of the right angles so that you remember that all of those angles there in the center are 90 degrees. That should help us out a lot because now we should hopefully know that if we want this angle right here and we already have a 90 and a 57, well, measure of angle GFJ plus 90 plus 57 must equal, hope I'm off the page a little, sorry, that has to equal 180, guys, right? That's a triangle. So we continue measure of GFJ plus 147 equals 180 and then when we subtract 147 from 180 we get 33 degrees okay so 33 degrees I'm gonna mark that right there 33 I'm gonna mark it somewhere else too and hopefully you guys agree with me because these sides are congruent well the opposite angles must be congruent too so I can put a 33 down here as well which is pretty important. All right, the next angle that we need is angle GFE. Well, GFE is right over here, and again, it's part of a right triangle, and I already have two of the angles. So measure of JFE plus 90 plus 25 must equal 180, or measure of JFE plus, what is that, 115 equals 180, and when I subtract 115 from 180, I get 65 degrees. So 65 degrees. What else can I do? Because this triangle is isosceles, right? This left triangle is isosceles. I know that over here is 65 degrees as well. Lastly, it asks me for GHE. Well, GHE is just a combination 
of this 33 degree, 33 degree angle and 65. So I add them 98 degrees and we are done with the first problem. Okay? When we take a look at the next one, PQRS, we have PQR, PQR. So that whole angle, the whole thing, I'm going to put it like an arrow at it so I remember. That whole thing's 78 degrees. And then I know that TRS is 59. Okay, so this is 59 degrees. And then, of course, it's a kite, so I can put all of my right angles in. Let's see what we're looking for first. Okay, so the first thing we're looking for is QRT. This can be challenging, but I don't, I, like, I don't want it to be. I want you to remember that because of these sides being congruent, we have an isosceles trapezoid. Ah, isosceles triangle, holy cow, my bad. And because I know this top angle up here, well, I can get what both of the measures are here of this angle up at R and this one at P, right? I know that 78 plus X plus X must equal 180, or 2X must equal 102, or X must equal 51 degrees, all right? So now I know that right here is 51 and 51, and I can mark it. QPS, QPS, okay, well, I want to get this whole angle down here. Ooh, let's use the fact that this is also an isosceles triangle and say that this is 59. All right, this is easy. We know that we're just going to add these two together. If I want the big angle, I add part plus part equals whole, 110 degrees. All right, the last one, you have multiple options here. Um, I think one of the easiest ways to do it is to think about it as a quadrilateral, right? If you know Q is 78, and you know angle R over here is 110, and you know down here at angle P, the big angle at P is another 110, and then maybe let's call it Y, that has to equal 360 because it's a quadrilateral. So let's see here, 220, 298 plus y is equal to 360, or y, which is the same thing as PSR, this angle that I'm talking about over here, should be 62 degrees. All right, so that's if you think about it as a quadrilateral. You could also say, well, you have an isosceles triangle, so 59 plus 59 is going to equal the angle that you're looking, or sorry, 59 plus 59 plus y is going to equal the 180. All right? So we can go over that more in class if you have questions on it. All right, isosceles trapezoid problems. I think these are nice and easy. Hopefully you guys agree. All right, we want the measure of y. <clears throat> well, um, y is over here. There's nothing about opposite angles anymore. These are trapezoids, not parallelograms. I do know that base angles are congruent. So I know that if this is 117, then that has to be 117. I also know that these two angles must be congruent. Okay? So I can say 117 plus 117 plus x plus x has to equal 360. Or if I keep going, what is that? 234 equals 2, ah, plus 2x equals 360. If I keep going, what do we get here? 2x equals 126. And if I divide by 2, I should get 63. So now I know that measure of angle y is equal to 63 degrees. Hopefully you guys saw that in an even easier way. Do you remember if these lines are parallel? What do we call these types of angles? These are alternate, or sorry, same side interior, so they have to be supplementary. So you could have just said x plus 117 is equal to 180 and got 63 as well. Okay? Cool. Let's keep going. Okay. RT is 24.1. QP is 9.6. Find PS. All right. The trick here, guys, is for you to remember our last property of isosceles trapezoids and that the diagonals must be congruent. So if RT is equal to 24.1, guess what else is? QS. That's big. 
That's big because now I can write, and if we think back to chapter one even, I can write a little story about part plus part equals whole. So I can say QP plus PS equals QS, and then when I plug stuff in, this gets really nice. Right? Perfect. So 24.1 minus 9 point, oh, can't, 9 point 6. And I'm getting that PS must equal 14.5. And that is what we were looking for. All right. All right. Down at the bottom, very similar to problem three, where we have angles. But this is even nicer, right? We already know that these are called base angles because they're sharing the same base. So I can just say 2y squared minus 25 equals y squared plus 24. And I can start to solve. Now, please don't freak out on this. You know what to do. I know I have to gather all the y's, so I'm going to subtract y squared. 2y squared minus y squared is just y squared. And then I have to move my 25 to the other side, so 24 plus 25 is 49. And then if you remember correctly, when we want to undo a square, we have to square root. So y must equal plus or minus 7, because the square root of 49 is plus or minus 7. And that is okay. It's okay for a variable to be negative here. It's not a side length. It's just a value that's getting plugged in. So here would be our answer for number five. And lastly, number six. All right, so let's see here. Well, JL, which is a diagonal, is 5z plus 3. KM is also a diagonal. And I have an isosceles trap. Oh, this is easy, guys. Isosceles trapezoids have congruent diagonals. So 5z plus 3 equals 9z minus 12. And let's see here. I'm going to move this and this. So 15 is equal to 4z. z is equal to 15 fourths or 3.75. All right, so there was a quick, oh, you couldn't even see that work that I just did. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Take a second, pause the video if you have to. Here's a quick, or these were quick problems. Um, I would say pretty close to what you would see on an assessment. So if you could, if you can get through these problems, I think you will be pretty much good to go. All right, thank you for watching. See you next time.